This video is for learning name D1 and we are looking at flowcharts. So the specification says we need to be able to interpret information presented using different forms of notation in a range of contexts. And this one we are focusing specifically on flowcharts. So we're going to learn how to create a flowchart for a system. And while doing that, you should be able to interpret what is happening in a flowchart. Quick recap, a flowchart shows the order of input, process and output for a system. It shows any inputs to the system, any outputs, any processes that take place, any decisions that take place and a clear beginning and end. The symbols that we need to use are shown here. They are rectangles for processes, arrows to show the flow, rounded rectangles for the start and end, a diamond for any decisions and a parallelogram for input, output, or data. So looking at this exam question, it says an online estate agent uses incremental backups for their data. An incremental backup will only back up a file if it has changed since the last backup or the file is new and has never been backed up before. The incremental backup must repeat this process for all the files and done it in Anna's laptop. Draw a flow chart to show the process for an incremental backup. So the easiest thing to do is to break the problem down into processes. See if there are any decisions and convert to a yes or no question for each decision. And then consider what happens if it's yes or no for each decision. Sometimes you might need to look at any inputs. However, you can still create the flow chart using processes without necessarily clearly highlighting input and output. So what I mean by that is technically the file is an input. So you could put the file in as an input. However, by putting the process as read the file, it's self-explanatory that the file has actually been input to the system. So our first process is to read the file. We've got another process is to back up the file, another process to ignore the file, and we've got some decisions. So the first one is, is the file being changed since the last backup? Has the file been new or has never been backed up? And are the files all completed? Because it says you've got to repeat for all files. So we know we've got three decisions and at least three processes that we need to look at. So we're going to need three rectangle symbols and three diamond shapes. Now, obviously, it's quite a big step to just show you a completed flowchart, but it's easier to talk you through the solution. So basically, we always need to start with the rounded rectangle at the beginning, which is start, and one at the end, which is for end. And usually we're going to have a flowchart that goes down the screen or down the page. Now, I try to put my decisions in with yes always going down the page so that it has a bit of a logical flow to it. Our first process is to read the file and before we've read a file we can't do anything else so I'm going to put that as our first process. Once the file has been read we need to check a couple of things. So first of all is the file new? If the file is new then we can continue on to back up the file. So when we put our decision boxes in, we need to have two arrows coming from the decision. One, we want to go down. Most of the time, it's better to go down with a yes and no, one of the other directions, either left or right. We can't go back up because that's the way we came from. So I'm going to go to the right. If the file is new and it's not new, so it's an old file, we're going to check if the file has changed since last time. And if the file has changed, then we're going to back up the file. If the file hasn't changed since last time, then we're going to ignore the file. So you can see our three processes, read the file, back up the file or ignore the file. Now this ignore file, technically we could miss it out, but I feel like it helps to explain the flowchart. Once we get past the backup or the ignore of the original file, we need to do a decision. Have all of the files in the storage, have they all been checked? If they have all been checked, then we just end the flowchart. If they haven't, 
then we go back to the beginning and we read the next file. So this is going to keep repeating and repeating this whole flowchart around and around until this question is yes. So have all files been checked? Yes, it will stop. So I feel like if you take your time to read through this and follow the flow of the arrows, it will start to make sense in your head. But we'll have another look at a different question to see if it helps to make it a bit more sense. So let's look at another exam question. Students at Ellesmere Park use passwords to access the IT systems. They must change their password regularly. When logging in, if the password's been used for three months or more, they must set a new password. The new password must be at least 10 characters long. If the new password does not meet the given rules and an error message is displayed, users are not allowed to log in until the new password meets the new password rules. Draw a flowchart to show the process for when students log in. So following the same steps as before, we're going to try and do this the same way, but this time I'm going to show you that you can put some inputs and outputs into the flowchart as well. So step one, we're going to break the problem down into processes. We're going to look at each decision and convert to a yes or no question. And we're going to consider what happens if yes or no for each decision. So if we go through similar steps as before, we can look and find that we are going to need some sort of input and the input is going to be the login details from the user. We can then see that there's going to be a process which is to check the password date. And the decision is going to be if the password is three months or older and it's a yes or no question. So is it three months or older? Yes. If it is no, then you're going to just log straight in and it's and it's not a problem. If it is three months or older, then we're going to do a process, which is to reset the password. Once we do that process, we need to check whether what they've put in is greater than 10 characters or not. If it is greater than 10 characters, then we can log in. If it isn't, then we need to ask them to reset the password again. So it's a case of breaking down the problem into stages and then you should be able to construct the, the flowchart as you go. This flowchart is a little bit more complicated than the one before. We can see that we've got our start and end as before, but this time we've added in some inputs. So at the beginning of the program, we're going to have an input and the system won't work without inputting something in. So we're going to input our password. Once the password has been put in, we can check whether that password is older than three months or not. So we're going to do a process which is to check the password. Then we're going to check if it's older than three months or not. So if it is, we're going to reset the password. If it isn't, we're going to go directly to the next step, which is to log in. So if we trace it through, you're going to go from start, input the password and then check it. If it's not older than three months, we're going to follow the line for no, and it goes straight to log in and ends the program. If their password is older than three months, then it moves down, follows this yes path, and goes to reset the password. Then we're going to check whether the password they've reset is greater than 10 characters. If it is, then we log in and it ends the program. If it's not greater than 10, then it comes up with an error message and goes back to reset the password again. And it will just keep doing that over and over again on repeat until you put it in with more than 10 characters.